Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our new sermon series, Holy Fire, an introduction to the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts. Fire is one of the great biblical illustrations of the Holy Spirit. Fire speaks of the presence and power of God. We're transitioning from our previous sermon series on our vision to a new series on the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts. And I want you to see the connection between these two series. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration behind the vision. We didn't just make the vision of this church up. The Spirit spoke to us uh, through the Bible. And I hope, if nothing else, our previous sermon series has made it clear that the Bible is the source of inspiration for our vision. And the Holy Spirit has spoken to us through his church through you, through our brothers and sisters in this family as we have prayed and listened and discerned his leading as best as we can. So the vision isn't my vision. I've heard lots of people say, Danny, I quite like your vision for the new church. It's not mine. The church isn't mine. The church is God's and the Holy Spirit has inspired our vision. So here's the thing, the Holy Spirit is the one we need to empower us to live out the vision God has given us. We need the Holy Spirit if our vision is going to become reality. Let me talk about my three-year-old little boy, uh, Petey Pie, on Christmas morning. And my kids are at an age, they're four and they're three, um, where you hope Christmas mornings will be magical and joyful, full of laughter and thanksgiving. As a parent, I've now discovered that's not quite the reality on Christmas morning. Um, So when it gets to the Christmas present opening part of festivities, um, this is um, kind of Petey Pie's uh, mode of operation. He will uh, be given a gift. He will um, rip open the gift. He will immediately discard the gift, throw the toy away. doesn't matter how much Santa spent on it. He will focus on the wrapping paper. He will then begin promptly to cry and complain and demand the next gift immediately and repeat. That was my Christmas morning with Petey Pie. I don't know where we're going wrong as parents. Petey Pie, he doesn't know what gifts are, he doesn't know how to use and enjoy them appropriately, and he doesn't know how to respond to the gift giver. In my experience, many Christians are similar to Petey Pie when it comes to spiritual gifts, although hopefully with considerably less crying and tantrums and throwing yourself on the floor. We don't know often what spiritual gifts we've been given. We don't know how to use and enjoy our gifts. And we don't know how to respond to the gift giver. I want to share something about my heart behind this series. I was blessed to come to faith, really, in, uh, through a youth congregation called Soul Survivor Harrow. It was a church really made up primarily of teens, kind of 15 to 18-year-olds. Um, we did have some youth leaders and some adults who actually knew what they were talking about to keep us vaguely on the right track. And at my youth church, I realised after I'd been attending this church for a few months that basically every single talk I heard came down or could be reduced to two points that we were told and we were um, reminded of um, week after week after week. And these are really um, two big ideas I want us all to receive and live from. And to be honest with you, after I'd heard these same two points made in a hundred different ways, I was starting to think this is getting a bit repetitive. It's getting a bit boring. Can't we move on to some deeper stuff? What I've realised as I've grown up is that these two points are so foundational that they've shaped my whole life. And as I've grown up and I've experienced different churches, I've realised not everyone in the church has had these two truths um, really embedded in their life. And these are the two truths. These are the two big ideas. Um, I want you all to know that God calls you to serve him. You are called. And I want you all to know that God gifts you to serve him. You are gifted. 
you are called and you are gifted. May sound embarrassingly basic stuff, but if you actually believe that deep down in your heart, that will shape how you live your life as a disciple of Jesus. And because these two truths were embedded in us so deeply, um, I realised pretty quickly that there are no such thing as consumers in the church. There should be no such thing as armchair critics in the church. No such thing as passive online viewers watching services in dark rooms in the church. One of our values, as you would have heard about in our vision series, is humble service. We're all called to express our spiritual gifts in humble service to the Lord and in the context of Christian community, the church. Lots of people are wondering um, how do they fit into the new vision. They're not quite sure um, where they fit and what their role is going to be, which is completely understandable. And let's be honest, the past year has been a rough one and we've not quite been doing things as we would like to. I want to assure you, everyone is going to have the opportunity to play. Everyone gets to play. I want everyone to have the opportunity to discover and grow in their spiritual gifts as God has called you. On Wednesday evening, uh, we were on Zoom prayer, as we do every Wednesday evening. And by the way, all are welcome to join us for Wednesday evening prayer. That's not just a special select group. And um, I led a short kind of reflection and I asked people, because I've been thinking about this sermon series, um, I asked people to share with me the questions that they have um, on the Holy Spirit and the subject of spiritual gifts. And there were um, lots of good questions that were put to me, some of which I've really got to do my homework to actually be able to offer a good answer to. But I thought I would um, perhaps ask a few questions that came up um, from Wednesday evening prayer that I thought would be a good way to introduce this series. Okay, question one. Um, Where do spiritual gifts come from? Where do they come from? Well, spiritual gifts come from the great giver, the great gift giver, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit. Now, if I may, um, can I please share just a quick embarrassing story of mine, if that's okay? Um, I want to take you back to when I was 20 years old. I was neither the uh, scholar nor the gentleman you see before you today. I was studying theology at Bible College, and I was attending a class on the Holy Spirit. It was probably called an introduction to the Holy Spirit. I'm in a classroom of about 30, and my lecturer asked the question, how would you explain the Holy Spirit? And like most 20-year-olds studying theology, I thought I know everything there is to know, so I'll offer an answer to this question. So I, um, I put my hand up, and this was the answer I gave to my lecturer. I said, if I was explaining the Holy Spirit, I would say the Holy Spirit is like the force from Star Wars. Now, that might have been the answer some of you would give if you were trying to explain the Holy Spirit. Okay, in my mind, that was the most theologically insightful answer any student had ever given in the history of Bible college lecturers. In my mind, I was waiting for other students to erupt in a spontaneous standing ovation. I was expecting the lecturer to say, we need to fast track this kid to being a professor and a lecturer in New Testament doctrine. Much to my disappointment, none of those things happened. And what actually happened was my lecturer essentially shut down his laptop, turned off the PowerPoint, and proceeded to spend the remainder of the lecture explaining to me and everyone else why that was a really terrible answer. It was a very painful experience. So let me try and share some of what I learned the hard way that day. So unlike the force, um, the Holy Spirit is divine. The Holy Spirit is God. So the Spirit is all the good omnis, if I can take you back to those words you would have learned while studying RE. So the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He's all-knowing. The Holy Spirit is omnibenevolent. He's all good and loving. The Spirit is eternal and uncreated. 
Genesis 1 verse 1, right at the beginning of the story. We read, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Right in the story of creation. Genesis 1 verse 1. We see the spirit of God at work. Unlike the force, the Holy Spirit is a person not an impersonal energy or power like electricity. So the Spirit is one of the three persons of God the Trinity. So we worship God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we often struggle the most relating to God the Holy Spirit. God the Father we can kind of understand and we can conceptualise perhaps. God the Son we know was Jesus of Nazareth. We can imagine what Jesus would, might have looked like and what it would have been like to meet him. But God the Holy Spirit we often struggle more to relate to. Which leads me on to my next uh, point or indeed lesson I learned a painful way. Unlike the force, the Holy Spirit is relational. Um, So you can love and be loved by the Holy Spirit. And in fact, if you're watching this, especially if you don't yet know that you are loved by God, God loves you so much. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit all love you more than you could possibly imagine. The Holy Spirit is relational. You can love the Spirit. You can reject or you can welcome the Spirit. You can resist or you can cooperate with the Spirit. Okay, unlike the force, the Holy Spirit can be grieved and offended. Ephesians 4 verse 30, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. You can offend the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is holy, and unholiness offends and grieves him. I wonder if you have grieved the Holy Spirit lately. Unlike the force, the Holy Spirit is free and uncontrollable. So in Star Wars, if any of you are fans, you will know that Jedis essentially dedicate their life to learning how to master the force, to wield the force as and when they want to for their purposes. Um, That's not how it works with the Holy Spirit. We don't learn to control the Holy Spirit and to wield the Holy Spirit or to use the Holy Spirit for our purposes and our causes and agenda. The Holy Spirit is completely free and uncontrollable. The actual challenge is to learn to submit to the Holy Spirit and be led by him. Okay, unlike the force, the Holy Spirit has no oppositional equal. So Star Wars is essentially um, a fairly even battle between the light side of the force, the goodies, and the dark side of the force, the baddies. And sometimes people can think that Christianity is a bit like that. Like you've got God on one side and you've got Satan on the other and they're locked in a kind of 50-50 battle. That's not what it's like at all. That's not the picture that the Bible gives us. Only God is sovereign. Only God is all-powerful. Only God is mighty. Only God is to be worshipped. And it's not a kind of even battle that we're in. Now, those were just a few of the things I learned painfully that day. Can you imagine how I felt at the end of that lecture? It was a humbling experience, but it was good for me. Okay, so, um, so we've learned who gives the gifts, but what are the spiritual gifts? I don't want to assume that as we talk about spiritual gifts throughout this series, that you will all know what we're even referring to when we're thinking of spiritual gifts. 
So in the New Testament, there are four key passages containing what you might call gift lists. They're all written by Paul, and basically it's him talking about spiritual gifts. And these are the texts that we will be exploring in more detail in the next few weeks. So if you want advance notice for the readings, this is what you are about to get. And Paul didn't intend these lists of spiritual gifts to be exhaustive. Um, Paul was writing to particular people with particular needs, and so he was addressing issues as they arose. All that being said, I want us now to take some time to listen and to hear the the words of Scripture as we hear these four um, readings, which are all quite short. But listen to these and um, be listening out for what the gifts are and perhaps you'll probably instantly be thinking about what gifts you might have. Okay, so um, Romans 12, 6 to 8. Emily is going to read Romans 12, 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Em. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 10. Debbie, um, if you could please read this for us. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Thank you, Debbie. Um, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27. By the way, I'm basically operating on a principle today that if you're in the building, you're involved in this talk. So, um, Jemima, go for it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret. Thank you, Jemima. Final reading, Ephesians 4, verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Thank you very much, um, Jerry. So those are four key texts in the New Testament that, if you like, present us with um, lists of spiritual gifts. Those are going to be the readings that we're going to be looking at over the coming few weeks. So I'm hoping, as you heard those readings, they sparked a lot of questions for you, um, a lot of gifts like maybe tongues or prophecy that maybe you're thinking, what the heck are those? I don't really understand what they are. Um, I hope you don't know everything there is to know about those passages, because if you do, you can probably take the next few weeks off. But that is what we're going to be looking at over the coming weeks. Um, just, just a couple of observations. Um, spiritual gifts seem to be a mix of both natural and supernatural ab- abilities. So you have some very natural gifts there, like um, service 
or encouraging others or administration. And you have some what you might call more supernatural abilities, such as healings or uh, miracles. And it seems to be, it doesn't matter what gifts you bring to the party, whether they're natural or supernatural, what matters is how you use them. And that you invite God to supercharge your gifts so that they can be used for his glory. Okay, who are spiritual gifts for? Who are they for? Um, Short answer to this one, spiritual gifts are for all God's people. Spiritual gifts are not just for super spirituals, you know, the sort of people that are up by 4am fasting and praying. Um, Spiritual gifts are not just for people in official positions of leadership. So you don't have to be ordained or a church leader to be spiritually gifted and to exercise spiritual gifts. Actually, um, discipleship, the call to discipleship is also the call to express your gifts in the church. And this is something I want to say to all of us as a church this morning. Um, Please don't disqualify yourself from being used by God. Don't count yourself out from having or using spiritual gifts. Um, Misplaced humility is a spiritual killer in the church. Um, Please never say, God couldn't possibly use someone like me. God's power is made perfect in our weakness. It's not about us, it's about God's work through his spirit in and through us. Um, Spiritual gifts are the birthright of every born again Christian. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, um, and Paul's writing to a church when he says this, not just to a couple of bishops or church leaders. Paul says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. All of us have spiritual gifts. And if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I don't, I'm the exception to the rule. My hope is in the next few weeks, you might discover how God has gifted you. Okay, why are spiritual gifts important? Well, spiritual gifts remind us we are one part of a body. You remember the reading that Ellie read for us just a moment ago from 1 Corinthians 12. The whole body metaphor, the whole church as the body of Christ with arms and legs and hands and feet and everyone's a different part of the body. Um, It's really interesting that I think Paul gives this metaphor for the church in the context of him explaining and teaching on spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts remind us we are one part of a body, the body of Christ. And so no one person has all the spiritual gifts. Thankfully, not even vicars need to possess all spiritual gifts. That actually spiritual gifts are given to us in such a way that they remind us that we were created for interdependency. So for us to be the church God's calling us to do, we all need to bring our gifts to the party and serve alongside others with different gifts. So um, we need each other to be and do all God desires for us. Spiritual gifts build up, edify and encourage the church. And spiritual gifts protect us from trying to be lone rangers. There are no kind of individual heroes in the church. There are no supermen or superwomen. We need each other to be the church God is calling us to be. Okay, um, I'm going to um, just move on because I want to draw this to a close before I go on for too long. Um, this is my final question. So if I've lost you, please come back in. Final question, and hopefully I want to be really practical just for a moment. Um, how do I discover what my spiritual gifts are and grow in them. How do I discover what my gifts are and how do I grow in them? Well, I've got three thoughts and I think I want this to be what we really begin to do in the coming weeks. Firstly, um, you need to identify your gifts. 
So I think in my experience, and people find it really hard to know how God's calling them to serve when they don't have an understanding of how God has gifted them to serve. So we need to identify our gifts. And so this week, um, as a result of this talk, I'm actually going to set you homework. And the homework is going to be to complete a spiritual gifts inventory. Um, And I want you to complete this spiritual gifts inventory. If you're like me, you normally find these kind of um, personality diagnostic tools um, not really your thing. Um, Even if you're in that category of people, please do this anyway, because I really think this will be very helpful for you and it will help you to identify how God has gifted you. So um, I've created a spiritual gift inventory that we are going to communicate throughout the week. Um, So it'll be included in the weekly update, which I know you all enjoy reading every week. It will be on the website and I'm sure we'll find other ways to get it out there. But when you receive what's called a spiritual gift inventory, please take probably 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour to complete it. And it will help you discover your top, if you like, three spiritual gifts. And there will also be suggestions in the spiritual inventory as to how you might want to um, try to express those gifts in the life of the church. So in other words, what opportunities, if you have that gift, are there to serve? Okay, the second thing, ask the gift giver to give you gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 says this, um, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special gifts, the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. Paul exhorts the Corinthians to eagerly desire spiritual gifts. And I think God wants us to be bold and to ask for him to release spiritual gifts to us. And um, so for me, um, when I was uh, younger, when I was at Soul Survivor, as I've already uh, mentioned, I felt like God was calling me and I was really excited by preaching and teaching. And I knew I didn't have a clue about the Bible and I was far too scared to stand up in front of anyone and speak, although I probably could have done this. Um, and so I began to ask God to give me the gift of preaching and the gift of leadership, because I also sensed he was calling me to be a church leader. And what I found is the more I asked, the better I got at things. The more God seemed to release his gifts to me. I want to encourage us to be bold in the next few weeks as we explore spiritual gifts and ask God to give us gifts. And finally, um, so if we identify our gifts, we ask for an increase in gifts or for new gifts, um, we need to actually try out our gifts and put them in to practice. And I want to invite all of us to be thinking and praying about how God is going to be calling us to serve on team, to use our gifts for the benefit of the church and for God's glory as we re-emerge from lockdown. So that's what we're going to be talking about a bit more in the next few weeks. So um, in this sermon series we're going to be talking a lot about spiritual gifts, what they are and how to exercise your gifts to the glory of God and for the building up of God's church. Why don't we just take a moment to, um, to pray, to wait on God, to respond to him and to invite God's empowering presence, his Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us and uh, if one thing we've learned over lockdown is that God is perfectly capable of moving by his spirit in our homes however we're watching this service so Lord we want to say come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit Lord I want to thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is the great gift giver. Lord, I pray for myself and for my brothers and sisters here at St. Peter's that now and in the coming weeks you would be speaking to us and revealing to us how you have uniquely gifted each one of us and how you're calling us to play our small part, humbly serving you in this church. So come, Holy Spirit. 
and I just invite you to continue to receive from the Lord, perhaps to pray into something you've heard or something God's prompted in you this morning as uh, Debbie continues to lead us in worship. Yeah. 